Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I am uh, back with another video. This one is using a Daper Daisy's image called Pumpkin Head Girl, that's what it's called. And um, I'm going to be doing a watercolor background using some distress inks. So you have some picked raspberry, some wilted violet, salty ocean, and chip sapphire. And I can, I mean, I just absolutely love that wilted violet color. It's like an electric purple. It's one of the new uh, Tim Holtz colors and I love it. So anyway, I'm here I'm working on watercolor paper, but I wanted to show you when I add water over my watercolor paper, my printer ink bleeds. Um, it's not waterproof, but I have found that if I blot up that first layer and then add more water, it doesn't bleed again. So um, that's how I'm able to, you know, watercolor my digital images and I have no issues. With this one, I wasn't really concerned about it just because um, I'm going to be using some darker colors and anything that bleeds off the ink will blend into those colors and it won't be an issue. So I'm starting with the um, the picked raspberry and I'm going to go ahead and lay that down. I'm just using a, a wide flat brush to pick up the ink and uh, I'm trying to learn how to work in layers. Um, I'm very impatient. Watercoloring is very time consuming. I want to put um, the ink on the paper and get the color that I want immediately. Instant gratification. <laughs> and uh, watercolors just don't work that way. So you just, you know, you have to be willing to uh, play around and work with them. It's a little uh, more of a fussy medium, if you will. So um, after I put down all of my pigment, I'm going to go in with a paper towel and just blot up the areas where the puddles are accumulating. Um, this is just so you don't get any weird lines or whatever. You can already tell my paper is warping because I don't um, tape it down. Um, cheap chicken, cheap, 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 and I won't cut my watercolor paper bigger than my card front. So I can't tape it down unless I want a border. Um, so I just, you know, I make it work. Um, I put them underneath books or I run it through my cuddle bug, you know, whatever. That's, I found a way to make them flatter, not flat period, but you know, flatter than they would be if I just left them and I'm okay with it. So um, here, yeah, you know, I, I'm just dropping in the, the color. I'm not being very careful about where I put it and I'm coloring up my image because um, it doesn't matter to me. I'm not going to be, I'm just using it as a guideline for where I'm going to put the image later on. And just to get some variation, I'm, you know, blotting just random, random places. <clears throat> Excuse me. I heat set it in between each layer, and um, here I didn't pre wet the paper. I just went in with water into um, my distress ink and then started adding that directly. This, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, this, doing that scares the crap out of me. Um, I just, I get very nervous about how the edges are gonna look. So, you know, this is, I'm trying to teach myself that it doesn't have to be perfect, that there's beauty in the imperfections. Um, so, but I did want more intense color, so I'm just adding uh, more layers of each one. And um, I'm going to do the same thing that I did before. I'll just go in and blot up random areas to try to get some more um, variation. So, I mean, watercolor is just fun, and it's supposed to be fun, and it's not supposed to be perfect. And I just need to learn that not everything needs to be, you know, clean and, and perfect lines. So this is going to be my last layer, and again, you know, just starting with pink, and this time I'm really, um, the video is speeded up, but not that much. I'm just slapping it down there, <laughs> like wherever it lands, it lands, we're rolling with it. Um, and I did like how the colors, you know, really began to blend, and there wasn't such a uh, distinct um, delineation between each color. So after I'm done here, I am, I'm going to heat set it again one last time. And um, then there still wasn't as much variation as I would like. So I went back in and just added um, like clean water in droplets. But then also toward the bottom, I wanted it to look like maybe there was some fog or something rolling in behind her. So I wanted to light up, lighten up those colors a little bit. So I'm just going to add my splatters with, you know, clean, clear water. Distress Ink does beautiful, beautiful things with clean, clear water. Um, yeah, try it. If you haven't tried it, get on that. And uh, then I'm going to go in with a, a paper towel, and I'm just going to blot it up. And um, you can see, I mean, it just adds such cool little 
um, you know, speckles, spatters, whatever you want to call them. And it's just, it's an awesome way to, to make your background a little bit more interesting. Or you can do it with like perfect pearls um, to add some shine to it. There's like a hundred million techniques that you can do with it. Distress inks are it's super cool. Um, here I'm just going to give it some ground. I'm using crushed olive and um, forest moss. Um, just, uh, you know, I wanted to, I wanted the colors to be complementary. And um, I love crushed olive. Like, I love mowed lawn, too, and you'll see me use it a lot. But when it comes to, like, fall cards, um, I'm going right for that yellow-green. <laughs> and I'm sure if you watch me with my Copa coloring, um, and even in this one, uh, I the yellow-green is what I gravitate toward. I own maybe, I don't know, five actually, like, G markers that are labeled green. Um, and all the rest of them are yellow-green. That's just what I like. So I heat set it, and I always flip it over and heat set the back as well. It kind of helps you with that warping. And then I put it underneath a book while I started my Copa coloring. I printed this image out a second time. This is not watercolor paper. It's regular cardstock. And um, I'm going to Copa color it, and then I'm going to fussy cut her out. I figure I show you guys all the time how I do one layer cards. And I wanted to show you that um, if one layer is not your bag, if you are into dimensional cards, you can do that too and still combine, um, you know, different mediums, the watercolor and the Copic and still get something that you like. So here she's a pumpkin. I wanted her to, apparently these are very popular, like vintage images, um, these pumpkin head children. Um, she ended up being very cute, but I'm not going to lie, when I first saw the images, I was like, that's creepy, yo. I'm, I don't like it. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's just not necessarily, I don't like creepy, you know. Yeah. Um, my friend Zoe just challenged me to uh, turn a stamp into a zombie, and I don't even know if I'm going to be able to do it. So here I'm just going through um, darkest to lightest, lightest to dark, or no. I messed that up, guys. Don't do what I just said. Lightest to darkest. Darkest to lightest. And then I felt like those lines got a little bit lost, so I'm just going back in with um, the darker colors and adding uh, a bit more dimension. So she actually looks like she has a pumpkin head. Um, I'm using the same colors for the large pumpkin that she's sitting on. And um, the lightest color I'm using is actually a Y, but it looks so close to a YR, guys. Like... Um, and even if it, I mean, it's okay to mix color families, whatever's going to work for the image that you have. Um, when I had sat down, uh, and when I was at the, I was at a retreat recently and I had sat down with a friend of mine named Jana and we were talking about, um, you know, Copa coloring and, and things being flat. And one of the things that we talked about a lot was the, your color choice. Um, you know, your colors have to be far enough away from each other that you get some contrast they can't all be just mushy same color so don't be so afraid um, of the dark and you know always try it out first and then if you don't like it it's cool you don't have to use it on your <laughs> final card so here I'm just adding my uh, darker shading you know where she's sitting it would be darker and Tammy's already drawn in some um, lines that um, the pumpkin has so it's just real easy to elongate those because that's where your shadows would be and um, then, you know, I'm, again, lightest to darkest, darkest to lightest. And I just love how that Y, that, um, what is it, Y38, it's called Honey. I don't think it looks like Honey, but that's the name of it. So I don't name them. That's not my job. Wouldn't it be wonderful to be like a color namer? Oh, man, I'd have so many interesting color names. But um, I just love how it makes that orange pop. Uh, here, like I said, um, I'm cutting this out. So I'm not being careful to stay in the lines. It doesn't matter to me that the stars are all bajiggity. Um, I'm going to trim them. So I use the same wise. And now I'm going to do um, her the leaves and her dress in some YGs. These are a little bit darker than I normally go. Um, you know, usually I'm like YG 01, 03, um, 17. And these are in the nines. Um, it's, it's a natural blending group. YG 93, 95, 97, 99. And um, I wanted to get a little bit of practice coloring clothes here. It's, you know, folds and, and highlights and things are something that I'm still learning, um, you know, 
I'm totally self-taught with my Copic, so there's a lot of things that I don't know. I was, you know, I didn't go to art school. I didn't. So I'm I'm learning right along with you guys. And one of the best tools that I found was uh, Make It Crafty's eBooks um, on folds and fabrics. I loved that. And um, so I'm leaving this sliver of white on the top of her sleeves and um, on the top of some of the folds. And this is just going to, you know, break that up and give it some real depth. Um, I'm always in awe of the way people can color, um, you know, clothes and folds and all of these things. And then they look so realistic and it's like amazing. And um, so I'm trying to trying to learn how to do that, right? And everybody wants to learn, you know, everyone wants people to... Um, I guess appreciate the uh, the talent that they have no matter what level that is so um, again I'm doing lightest lightest to darkest darkest to lightest and I wanted her dress to have um, some pleats it was just a large area and um, I wanted it to be just a little more interesting so I decided to carry down the pleats that um, Tammy had drawn at the top all the way through her skirt and um, you know, I'm trying to pay attention to what's going to be darker, what's going to be lighter. Every, you know, when things lay on top of each other, um, you know, there has to be a darker and a lighter section because that's how it is naturally. And um, I wasn't at the top. I didn't want to start filling it in too early. I have a tendency to be really heavy handed with my dark. And so I decided to wait that I was just going to do the lines for the pleats. And then when I went back through... I would go ahead and add, um, you know, a little more shading, which is how I usually do it. Um, I don't normally color it all in like I did with the lightest green um, on this one, but I was really paying attention. I was <laughs> really trying to get those folds figured out, so I was I was not really um, looking at what I was doing when it came to uh, or regarding any anything else on the dress. I was just trying to get the highlights correct and I still don't even know if I did you know what I'm saying it happens so um, once I'm on my last layer of the lightest color I'll go ahead and color over those highlights um, to make it a you know more cohesive you don't want to you want the highlights to be there but you don't want them to be bright white they wouldn't be bright white in real life and then somehow through all this coloring I managed to forget that loop that little loopy dress that's folded on itself completely missed that altogether so I got to go back in and, and snag that up um, after I was done with her dress I wanted to do her skin and I thought that I was just going to do um, three colors and it ended up being a little too light I just didn't like um, the way her skin tone was working with all the other colors so uh, after I did it, I went back in and did it again, but I added an E04 as my darkest shade, and that really helped um, get me some contrast. Um, I think it's interesting all the different variations of skin tones that you can use. Um, the E04 is new to me, and I actually saw uh, Marika from Make It Crafty use that, and I just thought it was beautiful, and then I tried it, and then I really thought it was beautiful, and so I've stuck with that. Here I wanted to just color her, um, I tried to do, I don't even know what I was thinking, guys. I tried to do some shading, like, in her eyes and mouth. It was so pointless, like, just so pointless. <laughs> don't waste your time. Um, but the shoes is not pointless. The shoes came out um, really cute. And my latest color is C3, and that's going to be the highlight on my shoes. And I just left the little teeniest, tiniest little sliver of that. Um, you know, highlights and your darkest shadows are not supposed to be large areas. Um, you've heard me say that before. The, the most you should see of in your image is your midtones. So I'm just going to give that a once over with the, the C3 and blend everything together. And then we're done. We're on to the trimming. The way that I do my um, fussy cutting is I like to cut everything apart into each individual piece because you can have, like, the, if you just try to color it, cut, color it, good God. If you just try to cut it out of your cardstock all as one full piece, it, um, it can pull on your scissors and then you get funky lines. So I'm using a Tuxedo Memento Black Marker to go over this. And I always do my images facing away from me because then if you slip, you mark on the back like I just did there instead of on the front where you colored. 
and I um, am taking a Copic multiliner and I'm just going to outline um, the image where you're going to see it. I didn't do the whole thing and I didn't feel like I had enough contrast on the bottom after the watercolor had dried. So just using those same YGs that I colored her dress with and adding a little bit of shadow. I did the real simple dots of glue where the stars are going to be and I glued them down flat and then I decided to pop her up on some foam. See I do know how to make cards with dimension. Isn't that a shocker? I, I actually do know how. Um, and then that's pretty much the card. The only thing that I did after this was I added um, a little bit of Wink Estella to um, her head and the pumpkin she's sitting on. So thank you for joining me and I will catch you guys later. Bye.